today we're going to take a look at the new Synology DS 2015 XS. This is a new 8-bay NAS. Um, whilst Synology already had their DS 1815, which is an 8-bay NAS, this is slightly different in terms of the build and the hardware of the NAS. The hardware of the NAS is now based on an ARM processor, which is built by Annapurna Labs. It's a 1.7 gigahertz ARM processor. The biggest difference here is because it is ARM, it's more of a mobile NAS. It takes less heat. It takes less power. It's basically what we would put in, let's say, a cell phone, for example. The advantage of this, however, is this has got a quad-core Annapurna processor inside. So because of that, at 1.7 gigahertz, it still does all the tasks that you're used to doing with the DS1815+. Plus. The major advantage here is with the Annapurna Labs, they've added 10 gig SFP onto the unit. So this is 10 gig ready in terms of it being installed. Not how the industry says 10 gig ready being you need to install a 10 gig card. This is now what we call 10 gig installed. It's ready to rock and roll when you get it. You don't need to buy anything else to add a 10 gig support to the unit. So with those little bits covered, let's go ahead, take a look at the front of the unit. It's a simple layout. It's what you're used to with it already with the um, DS1815+. Plus. You've basically got your power button at the top here. You've got your status indicators here on the right of it. So, well, my right of it. And you've got your LAN indicators on the left. Now, bear in mind the LAN indicators, the last two LAN indicators, number three and four, are for your RJ45 ports at the back. You'll see that when we turn the unit around. Um, LAN one and two won't come on unless you decide to use the built-in 10 gig SFP+. Bear in mind this doesn't use 10 gig Ethernet. You can't change the 10 gig configuration on here either as it's built onto the motherboard. So if you need something with 10 gig ethernet, we recommend you go up to a higher level QNAP. I mean, give us a call and we'll always speak to you about it as well. Um, but SFP Plus is absolutely fine. It's long range fiber, so you can use a nice long 10 foot cable and have it wherever you want in the office. Um, after that, you've got your HDDs here. They'll slide in, you can pull out your trays quite easily. They do have a locking mechanism on there, so you can lock the hard drive bays in and your hard drive indicators are at the top. Um, these will be green when your NAS is operating just fine. They go yellow when something's going wrong and they go red when, let's say, a hard drive has failed. Bear in mind, if you leave a bay empty, the indicator doesn't even come on, so it won't even be green. Um, during initial boot, all of them do come on. Don't, don't take that as though it's thought there's a hard drive in there. Um, generally, that's the front of the unit. It's a nice minimal layout. The unit in itself is plastic-based, not metal-based like we're used to with other NASs. That being said, we do find it to be quite rigid. We don't have any issues with the build quality on the NAS. One thing we do want to say is when we ship these to you, we do lock the hard drive base. We have had instances in shipping where the hard drive base do come out and they do come loose. So to avoid that happening and to avoid you powering on with the hard drive loose, so you lose your RAID array that you set up during NAS bit testing, we do lock the base. So if you do attempt to take out your hard drive when you do receive the units, make sure you unlock the unit first so you don't break your hard drive trays here. Um, the hard drive trays will put a little note. Synology hard drive trays have always been a little finicky. Um, so they are completely plastic. They are very easy to break, so you have to be quite careful. The latch does break off very easily. The other thing about the other thing about them are remember the new design of the Synology hard drive bays are screwless. Um, unless you're using a 2.5 inch hard drive in this, which it does support, you don't need to screw in your hard drive. They simply just pull off quite easily, um, and you secure your hard drive in that way. Your screw holes will go here, and you'll secure your hard drive again quite simply by sliding this back in. I'm going to try and do this without looking at it. There we go. So it just clicks back in. That's basically how you install a hard drive. That being said, that's not important information to you guys, simply because you'll buy it with NASBIT testing, hopefully, and that means more we'll set up and have the NAS ready to rock and roll for you by the time you get it. Um, that's generally the front of the unit. I'll spin you around to the back and we'll speak a little bit more about the back of the unit. Okay, taking a look at the back of the unit, you've got your power cable here, your standard power cable that goes in any PC. Down here you've got your two USB ports. This can be used for an external hard drive to back up to or back up from the NAS. Um, it doesn't extend the base of the NAS by any means. No, no USBs do that. They're not hosts. They're only there to receive and send data. Um, up here you've got... You're sorry, in the middle you've got your K-Lock. Um, if you do utilize K-Lock, that's fine. Um, if you don't, that's fine as well. Remember, you can always encrypt the RAID array, so you don't have to necessarily have a K-Lock there so your NAS doesn't get stolen. They can't touch your data without your encryption password. Always remember as well, if they pull out a hard drive, they can't read any data from that unless it's in this specific environment. Uh, on the left here, you've got your expansion unit. So this slot basically is only reserved for an expansion unit. The main expansion unit here 
is the DX1215. This will extend your NAS up to 20 bays. You can only use one of these on the 2015XS. Again, that's due to the limitation of the Annapurna Labs um, processor. So that's the highest it can go. Um, but 20 bays, I mean, is ample with 8 terabyte drives. You can get a whopping capacity out of this NAS at the moment. Above the expansion unit, uh, above the expansion slot, sorry, I keep calling it a unit. Above the expansion slot, you've got your two RJ45s. This unit does only go down to two RJ45s and not four like the DS1815 for the simple reason. Above it, you've got two 10 gig SFP pluses. This is the first time a NAS has come ready with 10 gig installed. Um, it's a big plus here for businesses and small business, for large enterprises and small businesses that do use 10 gig. This can be a great backup unit for your servers because it runs off the 10 gig, it won't be slow at all. Um, you'll get great IOs and you can back up basically using Veeam, using your virtual servers, you can back up all your data load to here simply because now they have included that 10 gig. Um, this is the first Synology NAS to include 10 gig installed. Um, at the moment it is only limited to SFP plus, you do not get an ethernet connection, um, but you can always get another NAS if you need the 10 gig ethernet. Um, aside from that, that's generally the back of the unit. As you can see, this NAS is very minimal. Um, because of the Annapurna Labs, there's no need for millions of other connections. eSATA has been completely taken away, but I mean, eSATA is an old technology. We don't really use it much anymore. Um, aside from that, that's it. I'll just bring you back around to the front. We'll talk a little bit more about the features of the NAS. So, bringing you back around to the front, we'll just talk, you can take a look at the unit while we talk a little bit more about the features. Um, Synology do have a couple of features that are different to other manufacturers. First one would be high availability. High availability is important in terms of having two units that can fail over one another. So let's say you're in an environment where this unit fails and you have HA set up. Um, that would allow this unit to basically shut down and die on you, uh, for lack of better words. Um, and the second unit would automatically take over. You don't have to rechange the IP addresses yourself. You don't have to change the configurations yourself. It is literally a mirror of this unit. Due to HA, everything that you change on the head unit will always change on the backup unit. That way, everything's literally in sync. It's what we call real-time replication, but without having you to schedule any replication. The HA will do it at all times, at all costs. So every second of the day, the heartbeat stays alive and HA basically backs up your unit. Um, this is great if you're in an environment where you need a redundant setup. Um, let's say, for instance, accountancy firms, lawyers, they all need redundant backups of their data. So HA is a very important feature for them. Um, Synology, all units do support HA. The limitation of HA is always going to be if you buy a 2015 XS, you have to buy a second 2015 XS, you have to have the same size hard drive and the same capacity. HA has to be identical throughout. That's the difference between HA and replication. Replication doesn't require you to have exactly the same setup. That can be a cost-effective way of doing it, but HA is just for peace of mind because you don't have to go through and set everything up afterwards again. HA aside, the other addition is if you need a little bit more I.O. and a little bit more performance out of the unit, let's say the Annapurna Labs processor you don't theme is just cutting it for you, you haven't been able to utilize 10 gig because 10 gig can be expensive to utilize, um, you're just on a regular 1 gig network, SSD cache is your best friend. You can take up two bays max for SSD cache. This will allow you to install an SSD. The biggest SSD you can get about is a terabyte at the moment, but that's a bit of a waste on cache. We don't recommend going up higher than 256 gig. Um, with 256 gig SSD cache, it'll sit on top of your radio and just boost performance. It typically acts as additional RAM if you want. Um, you can add in, when you do the SSD cache, make sure you do upgrade your RAM to 8 gig as opposed to the 4 gig stock configuration as that's necessary for the SSD cache. The other main features are, of course, remember DSM comes installed on this. It is an award-winning operating system with Synology. It's very easy to use and very intuitive. If you've used a smartphone, you're already used to using the Synology OS. Um, aside from that, this one is backed by a five-year warranty by Synology. That shows their confidence in this box. Uh, so you've got a nice manufacturer's warranty that will last on all hardware on this unit. Do bear in mind that it, it doesn't cover water damage and things like that. Make sure you do ensure the unit if you're in an environment where that is important for you. Um, aside from that, that's our summation of the DS2015XS. Um, if you did enjoy this video, always do like our video and subscribe to our channel so we can send you notifications of future video updates. If you have any other questions regarding this video, you can either leave us a comment or alternatively give us a call 407-960-4690. We're always available and happy to answer any questions. If you do call after 6 p.m. Eastern on Monday through Friday or you want to speak to us on the weekends, we are closed at those times. But we do always answer emails. You can email us at sales at simplynas.com or additionally as well. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as it helps us and we send out more content to you. If you have any other suggestions for videos, as we've mentioned before as well, leave those in the comments because we're happy to do whichever videos you guys feel are necessary for you to take a look at. Thank you for joining us today and have a wonderful day.